thank God that salvation is found through promise and not of obedience, not of works, not of how good you are. And it's always been by promise. But it's important and essential that God gave the law and the commandments to show people that they're not as good as they think they are. Now, when he said, hey, you do this, you do this, I'm going to bless you, you're going to be a holy nation, you're going to be lifted up. That's awesome. That sounds great. And like I said, you, can, you could listen to this and go, you know what, that's really not that bad. That's not that hard. I think we could do that. Right? I'm good enough. I could, I could handle that. But then everybody falls short. Everybody fails. And it's important for our own salvation to understand that we can't keep it. We can't keep the law. We, can't, we are not good enough. We are not holy like God is holy. And if we have any hopes of becoming in the presence of a holy God, then we need to be made holy by someone who already was holy, Jesus Christ, to, to forgive us of our sins and to allow us uh, entrance into heaven. Now, this covenant was made, and we see right off the bat, if you want to turn to Judges, you turn to Judges chapter 2, that the covenant is broken immediately. <laughs> I mean, it, it already was with the children of Israel wandering. You know, Moses just gets the law. He just gets the Ten Commandments. He's not even down from the mountain yet, and they already built themselves an idol, <laughs> right? I mean, he's not even down to give them the Ten Commandments, and they're already going after strange gods. And then, you know, from there, God gives them the Ten Commandments again because he, he, you know, he, he got mad and he, and he threw the, the tablets down. They broke. So he goes back and gets them again. But then even still, they don't have faith in God. And when God's going to bring them into the promised land, they're like, oh, no, we can't, we can't fight these people. They're too hard for, you know, and they're casting doubt on the promises of God. And they're not believing them and they're not obeying and being faithful in the Lord. They fail again. Deuteronomy, they get another, the, the, the new generation. Okay, here's the covenant, right? Keep this stuff, we'll bless you. Look at Judges chapter 2, because this is where we are just in history after Moses. Joshua leads them into the promised land. So during the, the time of Joshua leading them, it's like, I mean, this is, this is fresh, this is new, this is the covenant, yeah, great. Look at Judges chapter 2, verse number 1. And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. You shall throw down their altars. He's saying, this is what I told you to do when you go into promise. I said, this is part of the covenant. You need to throw down their altars. You need to break them down. He says, but you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? We see right away just breaking of the covenant. They didn't keep it. Verse number three, Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their God shall be a snare unto you. Jump down to verse number 18. Judges 2. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge, for it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. They ceased not from their own doings nor from their stubborn way. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he said, because that this people hath transgressed my covenant. So the children of Israel keep the covenant that God gave them? No. Now, when somebody keep, doesn't keep a promise or keep their end of the covenant, what happens? Covenant is broken. It's no good anymore. Right? I mean, if, if I enter into a covenant with a bank to give me a sum of money in order to buy a house, right? It's a mortgage. It's a covenant. It's a promise saying, okay, we're going to give you this lump sum of money and then you're going to pay us back this much every month, right, in order to, to get that money back. That's an agreement. I'm saying, yep, I'll be good for it. I'll pay it. I'll do it. Well, what happens if I don't pay? 
I break the covenant, I break the promise. I said, no, I'm going to make these payments and now I'm not making them anymore. Well, they can then take the house because I broke my end of the bargain. Now, if I'm making the payments, they can't just go and take the house. That's the collateral for the loan. They can't just go and take that. But as soon as I break the covenant, that's broken. And you could just say, well, not, now, now I'm not going, you're not going to have this anymore. And when the children of Israel break the covenant that they made with God, then they can't expect God to keep his end of the covenant and to make them this holy end, because he won't. Because they've broken the promise. 